As you're watching this video, it could be that working from home has become your new reality and that you already felt the consequences that this may have on your neck and your back in particular. In this short video, I'd like to introduce you to a six-step approach to improving your working from home habits, environment and posture. Before we go to the six steps, I just want to have step zero, which is a quick reminder of what it is to sit properly. Look, if we want to do this very quickly, basically we have to observe that gravity will make us slouch. Yeah? This slouch posture is the result of a pelvic rotation. You see my pelvis turns back and that takes with it the spine. The effect of slouching is more pressure on the discs, i.e. an increased risk of disc hernia, plus it pushes my head and shoulders forward, and this forward head posture is a source of neck pain, shoulder pain, headaches, etc. So what we want to avoid is this backward rotation of the pelvis. There's a very simple way to achieve that, which is to put something here, which is rigid, which is stiff, which will hold my pelvis. This is why good chairs have what we call a lumbar support, and sitting is basically going deep into the chair so as to rest your belt on the lumbar support. But we don't all have the belt at the same height, therefore on a good chair, the height of the lumbar support is adjustable. What you should do is adjust it so that you feel support here behind the two bony protrusions, which are actually the back side of your pelvis. If we want to make it in like two or three sentences, we would say, well, basically, when you sit well, you have your feet firmly on the ground. That means heels under the knees so that the push of the feet on the ground can throw you back into your chair where your pelvis will firmly contact the lumbar support. And this lumbar support will prevent the pelvis from rotating. Thereby, you will transfer your weight to the chair and everything which is on the chair is by definition not on your tissues anymore. And this is how we make it easier for you to last in this posture. As we'll see later in the, in the video, lasting in this posture does not mean that I can stay there for hours and days. I do have to take regular breaks, but this is step five. So let's now jump to step one. Step one is about recognizing the pros and cons of your seats at home. The first type of seats that you should run away from are seats which are too low. Because when your seat is too low, I mean it's the same as that, you will basically have a very closed hip joint and this very closed hip joint will become painful and as a result you will slouch. Yeah? Not only will you slouch, but you see as I do this movement, I go away from my keyboard and therefore I will have to stretch my arms, i.e. create neck strain to reach my working tools. Therefore, no seats which are too low. I also said that you need to rest your pelvis on something. Therefore, the seat that you should choose should have something to hold your belt and that will exclude a number of bar stools, for example. Third criteria which goes into the same direction, is you don't want a seat which is too deep. Again, like your couch. If your seat is too deep, it will hit the backside of your knee before you can touch the backrest and therefore you'll slouch again. Fourth criteria, you have to run away from seats which are too hard. I mean metal seats or wooden seats. Because when you sit well, you sit on your sitting bones, which are basically the, the, the lower parts of your pelvis. And if you are on your sitting bones on a metal or wooden chair, you will very quick, quickly get pain here under your buttocks and you will kind of avoid this posture either one way round back or the other way hollow back which is not healthier. Therefore you want a seat which is reasonably soft. So step one tells you well you should choose a seat which is neither too low nor too deep nor too firm and which has a kind of lumbar support, even if it's not, not perfect, we will be able to improve it in step two. After step one, we came to choose something which looks like a kitchen chair. 
You see, this one is not too low. I mean, I have a 90 degree angle in the, in the hip joint, which comes to a 90 degree angle in the knees. It's not too deep. I can't touch the backrest, but still we could criticize the fact that it's a bit too hard for staying eight hours. Plus, I mean, okay, it has a backrest, but not something really that holds my pelvis. So these are the two drawbacks of most kitchen chairs, and we will have to fix them one by one. To fix the issue of seat firmness, we will use a thin cushion. You see, it's important that it remains thin, because if it's a too thick cushion, it will glide like this and make your pelvis go away. So I put this under my buttocks, I'm slightly higher, but not much, and I do feel much more comfortable. Still, I don't feel that my belt is super well supported. Therefore, I will have to add something else. What I'll choose is a lumbar cushion. You see, it has different curvatures, and it's meant to hold the pelvis. This one, which you can find on my website, has two elastic straps, as well as an anti-slip back. We have it on the backrest. And you see that now there is something at belt level to hold my pelvis and I cannot slouch anymore. We come to step three. Step three is about reducing neck strain due to what you do with your hands, therefore keyboard mouse. For 90% of the European population, elbow height, which is the ideal keyboard height, will be between 68 and 76 centimeters. If you now measure the dining table, you will typically find around 78, 79 centimeters. Yeah, these are typical kitchen tables. So you see, most dining tables are too high to be computer desks. But now, okay, you're at home, you may have a computer desk, but if not, you've got to do with what you have. And therefore, what you'll have to do is to raise your elbow height. That means raise the seat. So you see, I take a big book, put it under the cushion and here I've raised the seat. Now what we also observe is that my heels are not firmly on the ground anymore. So therefore I will lack what I need to push myself deep into the chair. So I will need to use a footrest and the footrest should have exactly the same properties as the floor, which is big, flat, horizontal. This is my usual footrest. You see, it's, it's a simple wooden plank on two kitchen door handles. I put the footrest under my knees and here I have a chair that will support my pelvis. Of course, it is not adjustable. Of course, it is less comfortable than an office chair. But during the lockdown, we had no choice. We had to do with what we have. If today you have more budget, of course, you should get an office chair. But if you cannot, well, this is how you will replace it. This desk is at 70 centimeters. Therefore, I've removed the book so as to show you something well aligned. Now I will just come a bit closer to the desk so that the keyboard is right under my fingertips when uh, my elbows are loose. The mouse is also as close as it can to uh, the midline of my body so that I don't need to spread the elbow sideways to reach it, which would overload the neck. So here, having done this, we have really made sure that your hands are not gonna create strain on your neck. The other source of neck strain is what you do with your eyes. This is step four. Step four is mainly relevant for those of you who use a laptop or a small screen. You see, if I have a small screen, well, here it is comfortable for my hands, but I have to go low with my neck and this deep neck flexion will create serious cervical issues. When I was living in the Netherlands, the law was considering that the risk of using a laptop was three times higher as the risk of using a desktop. In other words, one hour on your laptop is equivalent to three hours on your desktop. Why? Simply because the hinge of the laptop between the screen and the keyboard creates a non-physiological link between your hands and your neck. And we need to break this link. This is why we will always use the laptop as a mere split screen. If your table is deep enough, you can put the laptop on a few books, top of the screen around 10 degrees below your line of sight, and you, you have a split keyboard and mouse, which makes sure that there's no non-physiological link between neck and hand. 
On the second picture, you see what I've done with my wife's closet. Well, there was not enough depth for the laptop, so I've opened it fully, put a ruler with double-sided tape so that it cannot glide forward, and still separate keyboard and separate mouse. So step four is about not using a screen which is too low and therefore using a separate keyboard and mouse and placing the screen around 10 degrees below your line of sight. Then we go to step five. Step five is an organizational step. It says that, well, even if you're setting well, well supported against your lumbar support, etc., after 25 to 30 minutes, there will be compression in your lower back simply due to the gravity. So nobody should stay for more than 30 minutes seated on this chair, i.e. you should stand up as often as you can. During your breaks, it's important that you do something to reset your upper body. Reset means relax muscles and make sure that you have blood circulation in, uh, in every part of your body. Therefore, we will do it a bit systematically and we will start with the feet parallel, the knees slightly unlocked and the pelvis pushed a bit back. So in the end, we're kind of standing like monkeys, but you see that my arms are super relaxed. And I will first shake my wrists gently. So this is a flexion extension movement a few times before I throw my thumbs. So now this is some kind of torsion movement in my forearms. Go up, I arrive at my elbows and you see I can relax my elbows one time to the front of my body, one time to the back of my body. Keep going, you arrive at shoulder level and here you should hear the noise of your arms uh, slapping your, your buttocks. Still going up, we arrive to the neck and at neck level we will do rotations whilst looking down. And then we go on and activate the whole spine very gently. When we're done with that, we will bend the chin forward and progressively go down. No point to go too low, but mainly keep looking backwards and do not cause any pain. You stay within your comfort zone. We're not here to impress anybody. The goal is not to make big movements. The goal is to stay super relaxed. This full routine takes around 40 seconds, but there's an even shorter one. Look, I will shake my neck and uh, arms, five seconds, and then five seconds for the spine. The goal of having a very short routine is to allow you to train very, very frequently. 10 seconds every 20 minutes are way more effective then two hours every Saturday. So the goal of this exercise, or the point of this exercise, is really frequency, not duration. Well, then we're moving to step six, which is also an organizational step, but at more macro level. Basically, this step is about saying that when you work from home, you tend to move less because you don't go to the car, from the car, to your work, or to the public transports, or etc., etc., etc. And therefore, as you move less, you need to create opportunities for movement. That's what we call physical activity or sports. My advice is you should move every day. Again, it's the issue of frequency that matters, not the issue of total duration. And to be able to move around 30 minutes per day, well, my opinion is that you need to find a physical activity which is simple from a logistic perspective. Let me explain. If you love to play soccer, which is very good, well, you'll need to be with your 10 friends, you'll need a um, football playground, you'll need etc. etc. This is too much logistics, you will not be able to do that every day. During the lockdown, I had taken my training bike and the jumping rope, and this is how I was kind of staying in movement without leaving the, the house so much. So these are just simple two examples, but this is the, um, the way to think about it. Find something which one, gives you a lot of, of pleasure because it's important to, to have fun when you do physical activity, otherwise you won't keep doing it. And two, something that is logistically simple so that you can practice a bit every day rather than a lot every week or every two weeks. You will find much more information on screen work and actually other topics on my website. Bear in mind though that this video is about what can you do when you have a low budget. If you have enough 
cash to buy a brand new workstation well please do so of course an office chair is better than a tuned kitchen chair if you choose to buy an office chair well you have to choose wisely on the website you will also find an article on what you should pay attention to general advice you never buy any office chair online you always have to test it first if you have any question on this video or anything feel free to reach out by mail or on Facebook and I'll be very happy to assist you further.